Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com. Photo, video, digital media production. Link is in the description. So happy holidays to everybody. Happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating. Uh, it is the season finale of Mr. Robot, uh, season four episodes 12 and 13 have just aired and we have just finished the episode a little bit, uh, frazzled, a little bit emotional, a little bit all over the place tonight. I'm not sure which, uh, emotion we're choosing. Uh, honestly, tonight's episodes, they, they, or aired back to back and uh by now i would have expected you to have watched 12 and 13 um i'm looking for a more in-depth plot synopsis and everything immediately after the episode but i can't find it on wikipedia i can't find it on imdb so kind of doing it fresh you know fresh off the dome fresh off the memory so apologies if i don't get everything uh word for word correct but uh it's not going to be a full-on recap, somewhat of an opinion, somewhat just thoughts about the entire season, how it worked as a whole. Um, so yeah, so Mr. Robot Season 4 ended tonight, and honestly, I'm just like, uh, my mind is like in like 20 different locations. It's like, it feels like the closing of some something big, I uh, you know? I've always put this show above, uh, above many other shows, mostly because of the, uh, uh, the visuals and then the acting and then, uh, the, the direction by Sam Esmail. But honestly, this has been an incredible season and, uh, an incredible series as a whole and stellar performances across the board. Matt Quayle on, as a composer, my gosh, I, I, I'm gonna watch. Uh, I'm gonna watch probably anything he composes and just to hear what his sound is and what he's bringing. Um, after this show, I'm absolutely gonna watch anything Rami Malek's in. You know, I wasn't a uh, biggest fan of Bohemian Rhapsody, but I mean, he carried the hell out of that as much as he could, and uh, he's uh, featuring in the new James Bond uh, as a villain, and I'm definitely gonna be going to see that. Everything he's been in, he always gives 110%, and he gives, you know, he deserves all the awards that he, um, all the accolades and awards he can. Um, in addition to Carly Chaikin, she's been amazing in this series. Um, she's not featured in the last these last two episodes too much, but I will say it's uh, really good uh, to see her towards the end of the season and the way they wrapped her up and the way that she's kind of turned into somewhat of a, a totem for um, Elliot um, it's uh, it's quite sweet so let's talk about these two episodes real quick before we kind of you know gloat about everything or you know tear it apart or you know I, I really don't think I, I have t- terribly too many criticisms I will say it was a pretty thick uh, plot in a way if you weren't taking you know uh, notes as in watching uh watching and listening to podcasts um talking about theories such as the alderson loop which is what it appears to have been this what a lot of people were talking about that he might be stuck in um i'm assuming that's what this last two episodes were kind of being stuck in the alderson loop um so the first episode, I, I love the style of the credits and all of that. The technicals, really love the, uh, the. I think it was a, somewhat of an orange or a red color. It almost reminded me of a Clockwork Orange a little bit, and kind of uh, that person personality. Uh, the set dressing, this new universe. I didn't realize it at first, but um, in episode eleven, we we kind of see glimpses of what's going on such as the nuclear family on the billboards and the kind of back to the future style really lays heavy into this episode. And, you know, we have the clock tower, we have the going down the street, um, even things such as the electric cars everywhere in this new, new world. And, um, showing that the, the visual style of, uh, Elliot having, uh, the only black car on the street, um, kind of just, 
showing he's got the black hat on and he's you know kind of crossing the board and so uh that's probably one of the first visual cues we get to see of who the our Elliot really is and so let me kind of just uh, you know go ahead to the end and talk about who our Elliot really is so it kind of can disperse throughout the last two episodes so Krista in kind of uh an interesting fashion it's not exactly Krista but it's a form of Krista um brings Elliot to the you know to her office I guess or, or quote unquote her office is not exactly it and she kind of explains to him in a way that, uh, you know, he has different protectors here and he has different uh, pers- personalities. She's like, basically, you've created the mother, the son, the father, uh, and you yourself are one, and so are us as the viewer. And um, maybe I'm missing one. So there's definitely seems to be multiple personalities over three. I think people were thinking that there was only three. I'm not sure if that was ever confirmed, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely way more than that. And so, um, this is where it kind of got a little bit, uh, confusing, especially in the realm of him having killed his, uh, the red Elliot universe, uh, clone. Um, I thought we were going to, originally in that first episode in episode, uh, 12, the way we're going through the episode, we're, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, Elliot's going through and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, go to my, mom, my mom's house and find out, you know, go to the, my dad's office, uh, the Mr. Robot office. And it, you know, everything's changed. Everything's different. Go to Angela's and they kept calling her Emily. Did anyone notice what was is Emily her mom? Am, am I am I getting that crazy? It, everyone kept saying, I thought I kept hearing the name Emily. And I was like, is the Angela in this new universe named Emily or something? Or is that her mom? I, I guess I need to go back and check that out. But um, that's neither here nor there. But the thing about that first episode, before he goes kind of all psycho Elliot, you know, there's small bits that show that he's, you know, probably not, uh, uh, baseline Elliot and he's not in the right world. You know, these, these, uh, earthquakes and these things going on in this universe that we see from episode 11, we see it from the red universe Elliot. And in the episode 12, we see it from, uh, our Elliot baseline Elliot's, um, uh, perspective and so when it all culminates and they have that little confrontation when uh Elliot is talking to himself first of all I was thoroughly impressed from a technical standpoint just how different uh Rami Malik carried himself it does actually look like he lost a little bit of weight for Elliot Prime um and you know in the base in the in the hoodie um versus when he is you know red red universe Elliot he does look a little bit, you know, quote unquote, thicker. I don't know if, if he actually did anything or if it was all camera tricks or what. Um, but I was like, you know, having that Christopher Nolan, holy shit, mind fuck when they were talking about finding all of the, uh, what is it called? The uh, sketches and stuff on the encrypted drive. And I love that hacking sequence of us looking at Elliot and looking at the computer and then looking at Elliot and looking at the keyboard and looking at Elliot and then back and back and forth. So we got some good hacking in this last two episodes. Um, but yeah, so basically he hacks what I guess Red Universe Elliot is Elliot Prime, and that's the Elliot we haven't that has been occupied in this Alderson loop, I guess, for some time. And this is not explicitly said, so I need to listen to podcasts. I need to, you know, get your you guys' feedback and gals' feedback in the comment section. So if I'm getting all of this wrong, you tell me. Um, so I so I can get this right. This is basically just my first watch, and I'm just trying to get it all out. Uh, it kind of feels cathartic to get it out, is what uh, suspended fandom I believe said. Um, he's definitely right. 
so I I believe what we're supposed to understand is that Elliot we've been following for several seasons has been taking control of the you know the real Elliot and so our baseline Elliot is the rage emotion of the uh, DID disorder um so the one thing I think I was a little bit uh like oh wait wait there's multiple there's multiple of these you know the, the you know the you got the mother you got the father you got the uh you got the son and she talked about the different ways that they were there to help him defend and help him kind of cope with day-to-day stuff and I was kind of I guess I didn't really understand like why he would create the mother to be such an ab- abusive form. I guess I, I'll let you on the comments talk or, you know, give me a, a, a better explanation. Cause I couldn't, it felt like the reason he would want to have the, the different disorders or the different, uh, uh, emotions, like why he would create a Mr. Robot is so that he would defend or, you know, he, he I didn't, I didn't see the reason and or why he would create, you know, the Elliot that we've been following the whole time because he needed a, a rage emotion. You know, it didn't seem like there was like a healing emotion. It didn't I didn't feel like his mother portrayed that. And I kind of felt like that was a little bit hand tagged on towards the end a little bit like like I'm not sure Sam Esmail knew that uh, he, he, we were going to he was going to write the mother as uh I don't, I don't remember what they said at the moment. It was, was a protector or something like that. I, I don't remember. Each one of them had some sort of label and they had like a scene that correlated along with it. And there was another scene they showed when they were on the boardwalk with Elliot and his, uh, and Mr. Robot just talking about him, uh, being shoved by his father a little bit, I think through the window. I thought we were going to get some sort of correlation of why Mr. Robot shoved him off the boardwalk there. Was that like, I, they called him the defender, I believe at that point, but I didn't understand why they were, why he would do that. It, it, there's several points within the, the Mr. Robot series that it felt like Mr. Robot himself was very self-destructive in a way. I don't know. It, it was kind of weird. Um, but, uh, I did enjoy the twist of finding out about Elliot being, uh, quote unquote rage and that he's kind of just, you know, a small fish in a big pond and the pond is swirling around, uh, Elliot's head, you know? So, uh, there were several people that had commented that they thought this is what was sort of going to happen. And, I, I honestly liked how it was executed. It kind of did this like reminiscing thing where they're kind of going through multiple seasons and multiple episodes, uh, going back and showing, uh, older footage and stuff like that. And I really like how it tied into the episode in season one with him having the, I think he was coming off of the drug overdose or whatever. Was it heroin or morphine? It was one. It was one of those drugs he was doing, and it actually he slipped into this world, and so. I guess what we have to come away with is that Zhang's machine never worked, that. That pr- part pretty much all happened in his head. Um. We're assuming it didn't work, and I guess in baseline reality. Um you know, all of the friends and all of the people we lost along the way are still lost. Um, I'm curious, uh, what baseline Elliot is like, you know, cause it seems like Elliot, the Elliot we know, I, I really need to come up with a name. We're going to call, uh, our Elliot, uh, Black Hood Elliot or Rage Elliot, what should we call him? We should call him Black Hood Elliot, I guess. Um or our we'll we'll just call him our Elliot. Um so the Elliot we've been following, I guess really did create a perfect loop for 
the the red Elliot to live in for the past, I don't know, couple years, I guess. And he was stuck in there. And at one point we're told by Mr. Robot that he can't be killed. And I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of questions about that. Um, first of all, that was, it was kind of hard to, you know, watch. We don't exactly see it. It's off screen, but Elliot choking himself in episode 12. And he, you know, he's like, you know, y'all should look off the screen or something like that. And it's like, Oh my gosh. I was like, well, I, I didn't even know what, what we were watching at this point when he was strangling himself. And, um, he had checked the phone like 10 times and it said 11 16. I was like, can this guy, you know, check the damn time and, uh, you know, quit looking at the photos only. And, uh, so yeah, just small little things. I was like, our Elliot is, you know, losing his shit. And so, um, yeah, it, overall it was definitely an emotional roller coaster ride. I don't have, uh, tons of things else to say about it except for uh, I'm, I'm sad that it's over at this point you know Mr. Robot has been a major part of you know the podcasting community and bringing everybody together and so it's always presented a very unique perspective on um, mental health and always I thought brought some of the most interesting visuals and sound that we've ever seen and heard in, in a film or medium or TV. Um, and I couldn't recommend it more. At this point, after watching it, I still put Mr. Robot in probably my top, let's just say top 10, top 15 shows of all time, mostly because I would love to show this as a complete package to somebody having never heard of this and just you know re-watching it and and being able to you know explore this and have it all unfold because the way it unfolds is almost every layer is every season provides a new layer and this layer provides new context and and it's like changing the perspective every time it's almost like uh, hmm. It's if I don't know how to pr- describe it exactly. I there's not many mediums or or pieces of television that, uh, you know, are on this level where you can just constantly rewatch it once, twice, even three or four times from each season. That is, and get something new from it because each season provides a you know a mic drop or a, a plot twist or something that you would say that recontextualizes the entire series and so I mean bravo for Sam Esmail to be able to you know pump something out on this scale on that time length I think that what was it 2014 was around the first uh, series was first season was released so within like five years to have i would say majority four you know four really strong seasons and three nearly perfect seasons i mean that's incredible i mean this is this is up there with breaking bad in my opinion when it comes to uh perfecting seasons and so um i i wouldn't you know Comparing them is kind of apples and oranges. They're such different flavors, but they give you such a interesting uh, ride and destination. And I would, you know, I mean, obviously recommend both. But uh, Mr. Robot, absolutely, you know, ten out of ten. And I think it was Todd Campbell was the cinematographer for the last ap- uh, last episode eleven. Let me see if he's the cinematographer for 12 and 13 as well so we can give proper credit to who deserves it um yeah he is todd campbell is cinematographer on 12 and 13 is let's see also todd campbell both directed and written by sam esmail which bravo honestly just 
bravo. I can't say enough good things about this. I probably will be able to go back and look a little bit, um, you know, between the cracks of the episode once I'm not, you know, gloating about it. But overall, I had a pretty positive reaction and slightly emotional reaction toward the end. Um, did anyone else, you know, were they moved at all? Um, did you like the pull out from the eye? Did you like the kind of 2001 style at the end going into the uh, movie, uh, movie, what is it, the light? And I couldn't really tell what we were looking at, but I assumed we were looking at the memories of Elliot. And we kind of had this, uh, this camera time lapse of of uh, our Elliot in the movie theater and you know him you know crying and whatnot I assume at the memories that they had just formed I guess I'm not really sure but this uh coming to uh, uh regeneration you know uh, all coming as one to as one unit I was just like yes this is this is really satisfying to to have this it if anyone has ever seen the movie inside out this is kind of what i was thinking like i was like as soon as krista was starting to describe all these different personalities and stuff i was like wow okay so mr robot is just the the angry red guy or sorry elliot alderson is the angry red guy <laughs> and mr robot is just one of those other crazy uh emotions in in the baseline elliot's head and honestly, I wish that we could, uh, I don't know, it's it's so weird that we don't actually get to see what baseline Elliot is like. I mean, I assume he's not like what we saw him in the alternate universe, um, but yeah, and honestly, I, I probably will have more questions the more I think about it, like, uh, hmm, was that Elliot's face when they were tell, talk, when he was talking to Angela? Like the crazy looking face. Um, I always thought it looked like him. And also we found out that Elliot, our our Elliot is named uh, the Mastermind. And so he's Rage, but it sounds like he's mas he's either the Mastermind or he's the one that's pulling the strings. He's the puppet master of... of uh, the real Elliot. There's there's our Elliot and then the real Elliot. So the real Elliot is, I guess, the one that no one will ever we we as viewers won't get to see. Um, did anyone have any trouble with uh, Darlene knowing that she wasn't talking to the right to the right Elliot the entire time? Did anyone think that was a uh, weird or did just kind of kind of convenient or something like that? I, or that she should have had a better explanation or something like that. I'm not really sure. I, I'm not really sure if I would have said that, but, uh, maybe Rip wrote just one or two things like, Oh, you know, if we, w if we woke you up, then, um, something bad would have happened. Um, maybe something like that. And there was another s line that I think that Mr. Robot had given earlier in the season that said that Darlene had woken Elliot up before, do we know exactly when Elliot had woken woken up before? Was that during one of those traumatizing events? Did I did I miss something on that? But um, yeah, uh, we didn't get we didn't get any Zhang. We didn't get any White Rose. It, uh, it was all flashback, if any. I kind of thought we would get just a little bit. I was actually surprised we got more Trenton and Ramiro and. Mobley than than all of them and we uh didn't get any Gideon uh I was kind of surprised about that especially because of some of the uh reoccurring cameos he's had um anything else that we want to cover some people had had talked about the glass the the blood in the uh what's it called in the trash can that was explained kind of a lot of people kind of had already filled in what was going to happen in the first little bit of this episode. But as soon as they sat down, you know, clone to clone or sorry, clone to clone Elliot, our Elliot versus the real Elliot. Um, 
it was a showdown that no one had a uh, theory crafted for. I mean, I went through, you know, multiple pages of, <laughs> of stuff and I did not see anything about, uh, this particular, well, I mean, most people had thought that, you know, he was in his head, but I didn't think that, I don't think most people thought he was going to have to hack himself, which was one of the coolest things, you know, uh, having to, you know, relearn everything and he's like oh shit you know go look at where all the cds where you keep all the important uh people you've hacked disk drives are and they're gone it's like fuck but yet he still has a secret uh you know hard drive with all these um you know drawings of our elliot and i wanted that to be explored a little bit i did anyone want uh you know the the two clones to kind of explore just that relationship just maybe a hair bit more like as soon as that earthquake happened we lo basically lose uh the the our elliot sorry we lose uh the real elliot um to uh bang to the head i was like whoa shit that was violent and then he, uh, our and then our elliot kills the real elliot and yeah so i kind of replaying all that in my head i'm like I really did. I was thinking that entire time. I was like, I wish that we were getting uh, a little bit more explanation between those two. Because I was like, whoa, this is this is a mind fuck right here. It's like, how does uh, is that guy have is is the uh, red Elliot having uh, dreams or is he having you know how is how is he coming up with sketches of the people in the real world? I guess. And I was kind of wanting to explore that idea. I mean, I felt like we could have had a whole entire episode on that and that idea is kind of closed pretty quickly. So, um, you can definitely see within these last two episodes, how Sam Esmail wanted this to probably be a movie and you could see how, let me see if you kind of remove the whole dark army plot line, how, this probably could have been a movie because I think that White Rose and Dark Army played such a l small role in these last two episodes that they were almost inconsequential. That I mean, when it comes down to it, they did have a massive role when it comes to the redistribution of wealth and that overall part of the series, which that's kind of handled earlier in the season. And just kind of, dro it's not drops, it's just unimportant to the story at the end. Um, that, honestly, you you could have removed Zhang, you could have removed all, you know, Dark Army, you could have removed 5-9 uh, stuff, I you know, hypothetically, and you could have probably made this a movie. But, I'm you know, I'm glad we have all this. I'm glad that we have this in-depth, uh, you know, breakdown of this individual. And basically the entire series is us watching Elliot Alderson through the eyes of, uh, you know, having rage and aggression. And I think at the very beginning we think that he's, you know, just mad at society but he's 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 got a lot more going on up in his head than we had ever imagined so um yeah i uh i was thoroughly thoroughly pleased with this final episode 10 out of 10 um i do want to do another episode sorry do do want to do another episode no i want to uh Record another podcast with some feedback and comments and questions and stuff like that. What people are feeling. And I'll give y'all some time to get that in. Um, I'll probably release it, I don't know, a little bit later in the week. Thursday, Friday-ish or something. You know, so y'all can have some time with the family during the holidays. And, um, yeah, what did, what did y'all think about Mr. Robot? You know, did... Um, did this review help you kind of, you know, go back over, regurgitate what's going on? Did y'all like how it ended at the end in the uh, the one room at the very end? I uh, I will say, 
the Tyrell stuff does feel a little bit still like a hanging thread. Like, why did he fade to blue? Did, was, are we supposed to believe that Ty, that Tyrell was not his baseline self? Maybe? Or something like that? Why did his, why, why was his wife able to hear, um, hear our um elliot during some of those scenes that's also another question uh what else off the top of my head i'm you know kind of um i don't think i have too many else too many things else to uh say on this one the last time we see leon you know he's dropping off darlene at the uh airport and they talk about it almost sounds like opening the idea to having a backdoor pilot with the Darlene and Leon story, uh, you know, taking down bad guys and shit like that. That honestly, I'd watch it. I mean, as long as it was directed by Sam Esmail, I mean, I'm down for anything. Um, now, if it's not, I don't know if that would go very far. <laughs> um, it's uh, all in the writing. Anything else we want to talk about during this? Uh last little bit it's it's interesting to just kind of go back and reflect um that one wedding scene uh with elliot on the beach that's uh that was quite interesting with everyone wearing f society masks i was like whoa this is quite a striking visual um anything else we want to discuss not i mean it's a lot of it was so like metaphor metaphorical and um you know visually oriented like seeing Elliot just wake up in the middle of the parking lot and just wide shot boom he's just standing there it's like nothing's around it's like oh shit um other things were really uh really awesome to watch were uh, when they're kind of going back and forth with the editing of the two clone, the two Elliot clones talking back and forth, back and forth, I was like, whoa, this is, you know, uh, quite visually, it, visually striking. It's different back and forth and really appreciated how not only the lighting, but whatever, you know, what they were wearing as well. I mean, one's in a old natty looking hoodie. And the other ones, you know, in a nice, you know, genuine sweater, sweater, and you can kind of tell, just just by that presentation, you know, set dressing, costumes, fucking matters. So, yeah. Um, anything else that we want to cover? Any? Let me see. Let's hop on uh, Twitter real quick and see if anyone has got some crazy things to say. My buddy watching, I don't know if my buddy that normally watches it with me is out of town, but I'll hear what he has to say during the feedback. Oh, yeah. So, um, someone says, wait, were we Elliot the entire time? Hmm. That would... That might make the most sense, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to explain that. I don't know. I feel like if we were Elliot, we would have been in first person for the Red Red Universe Elliot than if we were. Um, people are loving Carly Shaken's uh, performance, and I got to agree. I honestly would have you know, wanted it just as much. Um, Mr. Robot finale 10 out of 10 from Nicole Hale this show was everything and more perfect ending freckled Malik at Frederick Malik L.A. Alderson was Rami Malik's most interesting and captivating role he constantly delivered Outstanding performances throughout every scene, and his character will forever be known as one of the most compelling personas in television history. Thank you, friend. Hashtag Mr. Robot. 
What else do we have? Thank you for everything, and I will never forget this amazing show at Kill Process. What else do we have? Oh my gosh, I didn't talk about the scene with <laughs> um, Christian Slater's face upon everybody in Philip Price's Whiskey Sours. I gotta have one of those. There's so many things about this episode. I I I, I gotta go back and check them out again, but. Christian Slater's face on everybody imposed on like a small child. I was like, Oh my, <laughs> that was insane. Did anyone like have a visceral reaction? Like, oh, I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> like, uh, they were just kind of going all out. And some of those looked really good. And some of them looked really bad. Like some of the ones with Christian Slater's face on women, uh, with long hair, just, <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, yeah, people are putting the picture of Christian Slater <laughs> as a little kid. It's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what else do we have? What else do we have? <laughs> People are loving the title cards for uh, Mr. Robot, kind of going back and showing some of the best best parts. Uh, I like the very last scene. At, uh, we have the exit sign, I believe, that he's kind of going through, or it's over his head again. It's that kind of motif. And that part where it says that, you know, it'll only work, Mr. Robot, you know, says it'll only work if you let go. It's just like, oh, it was heartbreaking. It was like, damn it, we're going to lose our, you know, our friend. And, uh, yeah, it was, you know, thinking about it, it's like, oh, that, that was hard. Um, let's see. Tyrell shooting Elliot because it's funny and so weird, guys. What the fuck is going on? Um, I did think that was kind of weird. Didn't really, in oh, I guess he's having a replay of season two. Um, that was also never really explained why the gun jammed on Tyrell when they were when Mr. Robot was going to shoot him at one point. I think that was at the end of season two or something like that. I was like, hmm. I thought we were going to get some more explanation on that. Maybe it was a divine intervention. Um, let's see. <laughs> People were saying, is this real life? Is this just fantasy? <laughs> Putting uh, photos of Rami Malek uh, in Bohemian Rhapsody uh, as Freddie Mercury. Oh my gosh! But um, yeah, it was emotional seeing all everybody in that uh, that final room that we started in. Um, which now that I gotta think about it. Now I got questions. Oh, Lord. Wasn't at the beginning of the season, like, he had a job interview with Tyrell and all those random corporate fucks in that room. Like, I swear that room actually existed, so... Oh, Lord. Do we have an Inception-style ending? Like, what the hell did... You know, how how far into the dream are we right now? Because it feels like we're pretty deep in it. I've got questions, so I need y'all to give me some answers. Check the comments. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment, rate, share, subscribe, comment. You know what to do. Email the lucky dog pug, the lucky dog podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, thank you all for being tremendous supporters of the channel and you know giving us all the thumbs up and all the love. Thank you all. We can't do it without you. Um, got tons and tons of questions. Just you know. Thinking about it, I'm like, oh gosh, this could be a lot longer of a podcast if we really go deep into it. So um, I'm going to have to talk to some people, listen to some reviews, you know, take it easy a little bit. We'll come back, regroup, do a, you know, feedback podcast, you know, throw a comment in. We'll, we'll read it, see what, see what, uh, what everyone's got to say. Um, yeah. Also, we find out White Rose put Elliot in a protected room at the at the plant. Um, it's kind of interesting, I guess. You know, I, I guess that's how he lived. Uh, but yeah, I 
I got questions, you know. I really want to know is that does that room exist? Because I swear that that's where we see Tyrell at the beginning, you know. So got a lot of questions. I, mean, I don't know. Um, and where's Flipper? <laughs> Flipper better be all right. That's all I got to say. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for watching. Look at our podcast, Mister Robot. Season 4, episodes 12 and 13. Closing out, signing off, friend. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for watching. Take it easy.